Back in 1957, a famous western movie came out, showcasing a legendary showdown at the OK Corral. The film captures the intense face-off between lawmen and outlaws in the Wild West. But did you know there are some interesting, funny, and even sad facts about this movie? Stick around to find out. Do you have a special memory related to this old western flick? Or maybe you find some lesser known facts intriguing. Share your stories and thoughts down below. Now, kick back, relax, and get ready to explore the captivating world of gunfight at the OK Corral. There's a lot to uncover and enjoy about this timeless classic. In 1957, a western film stormed onto screens, captivating audiences with its portrayal of a legendary shootout in Tombstone, Arizona. The movie featured remarkable performances from its cast, notably Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas in the lead roles. Its mix of action, drama, and history resonated with viewers nationwide. Beyond the cinema, this tale left its mark on popular culture, inspiring a range of adaptations from TV series to spin-off movies. The showdown depicted in the film became deeply entrenched in American folklore, shaping perceptions of the Wild West. Fans eagerly bought merchandise like posters and toys, cementing the movie's place in their hearts. Over the years, the film continued to be referenced and parodied in various media forms, solidifying its position in Western cinema history. Its lasting popularity demonstrates its enduring impact on popular culture, ensuring that the story of Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday remains a vital part of the cinematic landscape. In the early 1950s, Lee Van Cleef worked as a camp counselor in New York City during the summer for Mark Furstenberg. Back then, he did different things compared to the tough characters he'd later play in movies. Around 1981, Burt Lancaster had a plan for a movie called Across the River and Into the Trees. It was supposed to be directed by Valerio Zerlini and star Lancaster with Audrey Hepburn. The movie was set to start filming in April 1981, but unfortunately never happened. Jack Alain, famous for playing bad guys on screen, wasn't just good at acting. He was also good at gambling. Besides his on-screen roles, he showed off his gambling skills by winning games with other cast and crew members on various sets. These actors came together in a memorable movie, showcasing their unique talents on the dusty streets of a town forever remembered in Western film history. Each actor brought their own touch to the story, creating a vivid picture of a showdown that has become an important part of Western films. Burt Lancaster's involvement in the film was contingent upon securing a lead role in Hal B. Wallace's production, The Rainmaker. This condition marked a strategic move in Lancaster's career negotiations. Charles Herbert, paralleling the fate of Jackie Coogan, faced financial challenges. His TV and film earnings amounting to one $700 were intended to sustain him until the age of 21. However, due to the absence of a long-term contract, a standard practice involving a 5% savings allocation, all his earnings went directly to his guardian's parents. Kirk Douglas, at the age of 101, became a great-grandfather when his grandson Cameron Douglas and girlfriend Vivian Thives welcomed a daughter named Lua Izzy Douglas on December 18, 2017. This unexpected familial development added a unique dimension to the actor's personal life. These personal and professional nuances of the individuals associated with the film offer a glimpse into the intricate stories that unfolded behind the scenes. In a standout moment from his career, Frank Phelan delivered the memorable line, I'm gonna kill that boy as Herbert T. Gillis in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. He truly brought a mix of intensity and humor to the role, making it one of the highlights of his acting journey. On a different note, Burt Lancaster made his first appearance on television in 1969, surprising everyone with a guest spot on Sesame Street where he recited the alphabet. This unexpected move showcased his versatility and his willingness to connect with various audiences from kids to grown-ups. Back in the late 1940s, Lancaster was set to star alongside Larry Day in a film called A Sinner Kissed an Angel. However, he didn't like the story and turned down the role, which led to the project's cancellation. Despite this setback, his good judgment and dedication to quality roles solidified his reputation as one of Hollywood's top actors. These stories highlight the diverse careers of Frank Phelan and Burt Lancaster, showing their range and impact on the entertainment industry. Their talents continue to inspire new generations of performers and filmmakers, leaving a lasting impression on the history of cinema and television. In 1997, Earl Holloman was considered for a role in a television adaptation of 12 Angry Men, but had to decline due to his busy schedule. Burt Lancaster, who stood 6'1 at his peak, appeared shorter than his 6'3 co-star Gary Cooper in Vera Cruz. Joe Van Fleet portrayed characters named Kate in three films within two years, including East of Eden and I'll Cry Tomorrow. 
At the age of 28, Martin Milner gained fame in 1960 alongside co-star George Maharis in a TV drama where he portrayed Todd Stiles, a young man who inherited a Corvette after his father's death. Together with Maharis, who played Buzz Murdoch, they embarked on a journey along Route 66, meeting various individuals and becoming involved in their lives. Route 66, the iconic highway stretching from Chicago to the Pacific Ocean, served as a prominent backdrop for the series, which was inspired by Jack Kerouac's novel On the Road. The show, unique for being entirely filmed on location, showcased the diverse landscapes of America, though some areas like Oklahoma and Texas proved less visually compelling. Maharis left the series due to illness, and Glenn Corbett replaced him, but the show's popularity waned, leading to its eventual cancellation. Earl Holloman, known for his role in the film, worked as a movie usher during his early teens in Shreveport, Louisiana. Joe Van Fleet, born into a family with roots in Michigan and Indiana, was the second of two daughters. Her older sister was Kareen Van Fleet Malich Sapiani. In the world of classic movies from the 1950s, the relationship between two lead actors often went beyond what was seen on screen. Despite claims of a strong friendship, they actually had a competitive bond, sometimes even disliking each other. Their rivalry contrasted with their on-screen teamwork, showing a deeper connection than what the public perceived. One of the actors, known for his versatility, left a lasting impact with his role in a movie called Sweet Smell of Success in 1957. His character, J.J. Hunsecker, was highly praised and even ranked as one of the greatest movie characters of all time by a magazine. This actor wasn't just confined to westerns like the movie they both starred in. Outside of acting, this actor was also involved in politics. During the 1972 presidential election, he actively supported George McGovern, showing his dedication to social and political causes beyond his acting career. The dynamic between these actors and the broader context of one of their careers adds depth to the stories surrounding their joint movie. It's a reminder of the intricate relationships not just within Hollywood, but also beyond the silver screen. In the movie Gunfight at the OK Corral, Jo Van Fleet, recognized for her talent, received a Tony Award nomination in 1958 for her role in Look Homeward, Angel. Meanwhile, Burt Lancaster, amidst his career, faced challenges. During a celebrity golf tournament, he experienced an unusual incident with director John Huston, who previously directed him in another film. Their disagreement led to an airborne act where ping pong balls reading Burt Lancaster sucks were dropped from a small plane. Additionally, Lancaster encountered health issues during the filming of Cattle Annie and Little Britches due to hepatitis. These incidents reflect the complexities behind the scenes of the film industry.